All right, here's a very useful worksheet if you do any sort of master keying. It is a one page pinning chart. And just as the name implies, it allows you to chart uh, the entire pinning segments for a master key system. Um, if you do a lot of master keying, obviously you know that time is of the essence. And if you can streamline and make things more efficient, uh, the better you're going to be. You're gonna maximize your profits and all of that. So being able to put all the pinning information on one page and knocking it out, for example, uh, from the time you generate the system and fulfill the initial order for the customer and all that, if you can do it at one time at the very beginning and then reference that throughout the life of the master key system, you're gonna save yourself who knows how much time because rather than each time you go to service a system and generating a pinning chart, uh, you've got it all right here for you and you can reference that for the life of the system. Obviously, it's not gonna do things like um, passing conditions, selective keys, things like that. That's gonna actually require you to make a pinning chart as the situation arises. But for just your standard key sets that are generated with the system when you build it, uh, this one page pinning chart's gonna take care of it. If you don't do a lot of master keying, but occasionally do, this is also gonna benefit you for the reasons I just identified, but plus, if you're not familiar with formulas and if you don't work with pinning formulas enough and maybe when you set up a system you learn it or at least become familiar enough with it to generate your pinning charts, uh, well six months, 12 months down the road, you're probably going to forget it when you're called back out there to uh, pin something up or, or rekey something. So if you can knock it out at the very beginning and not have to worry about refreshing your memory down the road when you're called out to service it, uh, it's definitely in your best interest to start using one of these pinning charts. I've got it available, and I'll include links, but I've got it available in a PDF and an Excel version. Uh, as you can see, this is set up, as it says at the top, small format, interchangeable core. It's a seven pin core. Um, so if, if that's what you're using it for, you can just print the PDF and fill it out by hand if you'd like, or open it up in Excel and fill it out at your computer. If you're doing something different, Maybe you wanna work on a uh, Sargent 6300 or Corbin large format interchangeable core system or whoever. Uh, what you can do is actually in the Excel file, since nothing's blocked off or locked up, you can actually go ahead and change uh, boxes, you can change verbiage, you can change whatever you want to make it suit your needs. And going a bit further, if you do any sort of high security work, even on standard cylinders where there's no uh, control lug or interchangeable core feature or anything like that, you can go ahead and generate the same one page pinning chart. Obviously, you're going to have to change some values. You know, you're going to have to remove the build up pin. But the, the point is, is that you can pretty much use this basis to create a one page pinning chart, no matter the cylinder type or the system itself. So, like I said, Excel is probably your best bet. If you're just going to input data as is, you can print it off. You can save it digitally ever how you store your files but Excel is probably going to be your best bet. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each part of this one page pinning chart. I'm going to show you uh, how it's laid out. Then we're going to input some data. And then finally, I'm going to show you how to use it. So we're going to do a whole walkthrough to give you a complete understanding of what this does and what it is. At the very top, I've got areas for the control key bidding as well as the top master key bidding. Now, when I flip this over in a bit and show you uh, those biddings, they're gonna be color coordinated. That's because in this Excel file, I've color coordinated everything. I've found that if you're doing a lot of pinning, numbers can get confusing and jumbled, so it helps to color coordinate everything to make things smoother and easier for you, so there's no room for potential area or anything like that. Underneath the biddings, we've got top pins. Like I said, this is a small format interchangeable core. So the top pins, no matter the key set or key biddings, uh, it's always going to be the same. So rather than input that, uh, you know, 28 times in the chart, we're just going to put it up at the top and you can reference that throughout. Down here, you'll notice there are four rows, seven columns. In a small format interchangeable core, A2, for example, that's a two-step pinning system. So you've got progressive sets of zero, two, four, six, and eight. That's five. And then you've got, for the odds, one, three, five, seven, nine. Obviously, in progress chambers, 
your change key and lower keys are not going to share the same bidding as the top master key so you would list the progressives down here and that's what these are for these are for the progressives um, so for example if i've got a nine here in my top master key bidding chamber one my progressives would be one three five seven nine would be up there obviously we wouldn't use that it's available for all chambers in case you have a um, total pin progression system everything's progressed every chambers progressed that's up there at the bottom though if you're utilizing a rotating constant system there's areas for each chamber depending on which you're holding which is which is being the constant for you to input that data the reason it's down here as opposed to up here is because you don't want to mix up uh, your constants and your progressions uh, just helps to kind of separate them and again six 12 months down the road if you if you're putting a constant value in with the rest of them you may wonder hey why did i do that or oh okay so that means i can progress this and blah 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 it can just get uh, a little bit more confusing so we've got an area down here where you can put uh, your constants for any chamber you're not progressing so what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and start inputting some of this data and as i said the excel spreadsheet uh, it's it's color coordinated uh, so your control bidding in this example is in red and your top master key is blue so we've got that information input now what we're going to go ahead and do and in this example i'm going to progress every chamber so i'm going to go ahead and lay out all my progressives and in that case it's a color of green so kind of just again to repeat what i said before we've got a tmk nine bidding in the first chamber well, the available progressives in that case are one, three, five, and seven. Going to the next one, we've got an eight. So we've got zero, two, four, and six. And one more just for examples purpose. Uh, three, so we've got one, not gonna use three, so one, five, seven, nine. And that's how you lay it out. Last step, we're going to determine our pin segments. Now there's a number of ways you can do this. There's free apps on your phone available. There's software, uh, there's websites, there's Excel spreadsheets. There's all kinds of ways, formulas, if you wanna do it the manual way, but there's a number of different ways you can determine the pin segments for each chamber, each bidding. Uh, not gonna talk about that obviously, but just to say that you have uh, plenty of avenues out there to determine these pin segments. So. Let's assume that you, you know how to do that or at least where to find that information and then we're going to input that into the chart. And so when you do that, it'll end up looking like this. And as I said, top pins are shared in small format interchangeable core. So for example, one is the bottom pin in this chamber for this progressive, eight's the master pin, eight's the build up pin, and then finally six. And since it's the same, you do the same for the three progressive, the five, and then the seven. So once it's all laid out like this, I'll show you how to use it. Let's say you've got a change key bidding of 101.3521, 101.3521. Very simply, all you have to do when pinning up, go to the first chamber for the one bidding. There's our pinning information. Second chamber is a zero. So we go over to this box, zero, eight, 10, five. five. That's our, our pinning for that chamber. 101, next chamber is one, or one, one, two, 12, eight. And we'll drop down here for three, three, two, six, 12. Over for five, one, four, six, 12. Over for two, two, four, 12, five. And then finally back up to one, one, six, six, 10. And it's just like that throughout the whole system. Whatever your bidding is, your change key bidding, whatever it may be, you simply have to find it in the chart, move left to right, tip to bow, and it'll have all your pinning segments, all the information there. You can knock it out really quick. Uh, just a few more tips I would suggest. Um, laminate these if you can, or at least put a, some sort of protective film on them, because like I said, you'll use these throughout the life of the system, or at least as long as it's set up as it is initially set up. So it's gonna get a lot of use. 
So protect it so you don't have to recreate it down the road. Um, second thing is, is if you're keying a large number of cores alike or cylinders alike, um, let's say you've got five or 10 or 15 or ever how many, what I like to do is I like to take a, uh, just a small notepad, just like this, okay? And since I'm gonna be keying up five, 10, 15 alike, I'll go ahead and chart it, you know, ever how, whatever the bidding is, I'll write it down onto this pad because if I can keep this pad right in front of the pin chart rather than this, or keep this pad right in front of the pinning tray or the, the pin kit, rather than going back and forth between the pin kit, this, back and forth, back and forth, slow me down a little bit. If I can put it on this pad and lay it either right below or right on the pin kit, I can knock it out real quick. So that's just a one page pinning chart. It's a great tool. Not a lot of people use it. Not a lot of people know about it, I don't think, but uh, we use them all the time. Uh, very, very good tools. Makes life a lot easier, makes things very fast. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks.